Well, smash, boom, bang. It's another story about the end of everything. Although today is a cloudless summer day, the sun doesn't really shine as bright as it ought to. In fact, it's freezing cold down here on Earth. Uh Uh-oh, the Kuiper Belt is at it again. The Kuiper Belt is a huge disk of cosmic rock that stretches out across the universe somewhere between Neptune and Pluto. It is left over from the formation of the planets in our solar system. Cosmologist John Gibbon once called its discovery one of the most dramatic astronomical findings of the 1990s. And here, lurking right behind our back door, is a real Armageddon in the making. Okay, so Neptune and Pluto, that's a long way away. And the Kuiper Belt sits some 40 to 50 times further out from the sun than we do. But as computer simulations show, that might change. From time to time, the gravity of the outer planets will disturb the belt and sling a huge piece of rock straight into the inner solar system. Doom will come rushing straight toward us. One problem is, we hardly see it coming. The Kuiper Belt was discovered very late, partly because the comets it contains move very slowly, and partly because it isn't made of solid pieces of rock. Most of the super comets in the Kuiper Belt are what we call dirty snowballs, made mostly of dust and ice, making them incredibly hard to detect with modern equipment. Calculations show that there are at least 70,000 of these icy objects out there, and most of them are really, really big. The first one that was detected, an object called QB1, is about 100 kilometers across. By comparison, the killer meteorite that wiped out the dinosaurs and almost all life on Earth some 65 million years ago was only 10 kilometers across. That's about a 55, 55 kilometer across difference, or 20 times as small as the QB1. Some experts agree that Pluto and its moon Charon themselves should be considered part of the Kuiper Belt. Gladly, the chances of such a super comet actually hitting the Earth are vanishingly small. The Earth is only a tiny P in the vastness of the universe and is protected by incoming comets by the gravitational fields of other planets. But then again, full impact is not the biggest threat of the Kuiper Belt. That's not the threat that it poses to us. As a Kuiper Belt comet comes rushing in, its icy surface will heat up. Eventually, when it comes too close to the sun, it'll just explode. Its remains will be scattered all over the place. The dust will be attracted to the sun's gravity and clot together into a temporary ring of dust around the sun. The debris will block some of the sun's heat. When that happens, we're in big trouble. Temperatures on the Earth will drop rapidly. The dust will trigger an ice age here on Earth. Oh, and there's the realistic danger of our planet is hit by comets after all. And with all those chunks of comet debris flying around in our part of the solar system, it's not unlikely. Obviously, what grim destiny exactly awaits us depends a lot on many things. Many of them are determined by pure chance. One particular nasty Kuiper Belt scenario involves an all-out ice age in which so much of the sun's heat is blocked that the entire Earth turns into a barren, frozen planet. The Earth's climate thermostat, being the intricate interplay between the oceans, land, vegetation, and algae, would be severely deregulated, and it would take the planet hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, to recover. Of course, the chances of survival would be slim. In a stone-cold world with frozen oceans and no soil to grow your food on, but hey, here's the good news. With or without humans, the planet will eventually survive. It did so before. In the pre-Cambrian age, more than 600 million years ago, the Earth survived several super ice ages. But then again, in those days, the most complicated life forms on the planet were tiny shrimps and snails crawling around in the deepest depths of the ocean.
And if you don't know, now you know, nigga.